A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my name is Sohail and I work for Airtight Networks. I'm a Wi-Fi security researcher. And today I'm going to talk about a security problem in WPA2 protocol. You may have heard about whole 196. In fact, in the last one and a half week, a lot has been said and discussed about whole 196 or uh, GTK vulnerability. And in fact, a lot of speculations uh, have been seen around this problem. So today we are going to present the real picture and we'll help you uh, understand or see the implication of the problem. So let me answer the most frequently asked questions that people have asked to me is, where did we find this whole 196? And for your information, it's already there in the standard. For last six years, it was buried in the standard on page number 196, and that's the reason why we, we, we are calling it a whole 196. If you see the last line of the page 196, the designers of dot 11 have warned about the weakness of WPA2, one, one key that is used in WPA2. And on the last line, there is something mentioned about that key. GTKs do not have this property. So designers are talking about some property of encryption key which is not there, which is lacking. But this, this problem was never discussed and in fact, this, I mean, there is a problem, but it was never brought to the attention of WPA2 users, right? So we will, in this presentation, we'll talk about that. So this talk is not about unauthorized user taking or gaining access to your corporate or your trusted network. No, it's not about that. It's not about key cracking, okay? It's not about cracking pri uh, private key of a user. This talk is about an insider attack that can be carried by a malicious user who is already part of your network, who is already inside the network. But I have seen people saying that, okay, when a user, malicious user is already inside the network, then he can do pretty much anything or everything in, the net, in that network. Okay, so what's the big deal? Fine, so let me ask this question to them. If for the, let's assume that if you are a malicious insider, can you really sniff private data of other Wi-Fi users? If you try to capture packet in the air, you will see encrypted packet. And since you don't have key, you will not be able to decrypt it. So can you really sniff or see private traffic of other Wi-Fi users even if you are inside the network. And the trick to do that is basically one can try launching man in the middle attack and the, mo the most popular trick is basically in, in basically in Wi-Fi network is setting up a, ma a honey pot, okay? Using this one can actually do man in the middle and try to capture all the traffic of a user. But in a WPA2 networks, client devices are actually configured to connect to WPA2, okay? So those clients are not going to authenticate honeypot access point or they will not connect. So this trick is also not going to work. So what are the other options available? So probably we can think of launching man in the middle style, uh, man in the middle attack in a very conventional style, old style, with the help of ARP spoofing attack. But today's network are basically much more secure than what it used to be. There are security systems which can actually detect ARP spoofing attack, wired IDS, IPS, or even switches have capability to detect it. Okay. So if, if you are going to launch ARP spoofing attack, the chances of getting detected is very, very high, okay? 
So now let me ask again this question that without getting detected, can you really sniff private traffic or data of other Wi-Fi users, even if you are inside that network? Is it really possible? The answer is yes. In this presentation, I'm going to show you that it is possible. And this will not involve any key cracking or brute force. How? Let's walk through the presentation and we'll see. So I'd like to briefly talk about WPA2 protocol. I'm sure many of you must have a good technical understanding of that, but just to recall, in WPA2 protocol, there are two types of keys which are used for traffic encryption, packet encryption. One is called PTK, pairwise transient key. And the other one is GTK group temporal key. And the purpose of PTK is to protect unicast traffic. Okay? While the purpose of GTK is to protect broadcast or multicast traffic. So there are two types of keys. If you see PTK is a unique key. It is unique for each user and it is derived per session. So for example, if two clients are connected to a WPA2 enabled access point, both of these clients will be using two different keys. So client one will not know the private key of client two and client two will not know the private key of client one. So their traffic is basically secure. But GTK is a shared key. It is shared among all associated client devices. And it is actually managed by access point. So whenever a client connects to access point, it receives a copy of GTK from access point. Okay? So at any point in time, all associated clients are going to have same copy of GTK. Now, I said GTK is used to protect broadcast traffic or multicast traffic. So in a, in a Wi-Fi network, if you have noticed, all broadcast traffic is basically sent by access point because access point can talk to each and every client, okay? And this traffic is never sent by a client device because client can, whenever a client has to talk to other Wi-Fi client device, it, it first sends packets to access point, okay? So for a client, destination is always fixed, which means client always send unicast packet and that gets, so does that mean client never generate broadcast packet? It generates, but in dot 11, that broadcast frame gets mapped to unicast frame, okay? We'll not talk about that, but just to, you know. So, which means by design, GTK is going to be used as a one-way key. Access point is going to use it for traffic encryption, broadcast traffic encryption, and all client devices are going to use it as a decryption key. And that's how the software in access point and clients are programmed. And here I'm showing you a log of Wi-Fi client device. There is a software called WPS Applicant which runs uh, on client devices. And it shows that client has a copy of GTK available, right? So the group key is always available to client device. It is always known to a client device. Why it is available? Why client keeps a copy of GTK? Because it has to decrypt packet coming from access point, okay? Now let me ask, what is stopping that client not using that GTK for its own packet encryption? So protocol says something which is a normal, normal behavior, right? Client should not use this key for packet encryption. It should always use this key for packet decryption. But a malicious user can always exploit this key. A malicious user present in that network can always use this key to create its own packet, generate its own packet. which means for a malicious user, one broadcast frame is available which 
that malicious insider can generate is created and send that send that packet to all other Wi-Fi client devices. But Wi-Fi client devices are programmed to receive packets from access point, not from other Wi-Fi client device, right? So, in order to successfully deliver that packet, this insider is going to spoof the MAC address of access point. Okay. So when the, once the attacker keeps the MAC address of access point as a sender, sender of that packet, all clients present in that network and associated with the same access point is going to receive that packet and going to decrypt it successfully, right? Which means a malicious insider has access to a broadcast frame which it, it can create and generate and send. And there is no way for other Wi-Fi client devices to differentiate whether this packet is coming from other malicious user or it is coming from access point. Absolutely there is nothing present in that packet which can help a client to, you know. So it's now it, it's clear that attacker can send broadcast packet. So he can do a lot of attack. It, it depends what kind of attack payload he is going to encapsulate inside that broadcast frame, right? So in this presentation, I am going to show you three exploits of GTK. And the first exploit is basically using the ARP payload to encapsulate and create broadcast frame. So in this example, attacker is generating its own broadcast frame and sending that frame to other Wi-Fi users present in that network and it basically the attacker is advertising that he is a gateway of that network. All other clients are going to receive that packet and update its ARP cache thinking that the gateway, this new machine has become the gateway of that. That's how our, our protocol works. If you send, if you advertise that you are a gateway, all recipients of that packet is going to update its ARP cache. Okay? So attacker becomes the gateway of the network for that client who receives that packet and after that all traffic generated from that victim is going to be destined to this new gateway who is the attacker. So victim sends all its packet to access point encrypting its packet with its own private key which is known to this user or access point. So access point will be able to decrypt those packets and at this point, access point finds that this packet is actually destined for other Wi-Fi user who is also part of the same network. So access point forwards that packet to other Wi-Fi user. And that other Wi-Fi user happened to be a malicious attacker. Right? So finally the packet reaches to that insider. So just by injecting one spoofed gratuitous or ARP request frame, the attacker is able to redirect all the private, private traffic of a legitimate user in that network to its own machine. At this point, attacker can actually drop all the packets and do a denial of service attack in the network. But he wants to steal information, right? So for that he has to provide a seamless service to the user, a transparent service to the user. Users should not feel that there is something wrong going on in that network. For example, if I am accessing Yahoo,